no. It's that shank lady. She looks upset. Ah, uh, don't worry, I'm a loser. Welcome back to the trends and to another fantastic animated universe full of surprises and connections. Awesome. In today's video, we're going to revisit the marvelous world inside the Family Fun Center and Arcade, home of Wreck-It Ralph, Princess Vanellope, and the rest of the cast, formed by the unlikely union of lots and lots of our favorite Disney and video game characters, but this time with internet access. That's right, buckle up and get your Wi-Fi ready because the offline arcade is going bye-bye as we surf the web to show you all the hidden Easter eggs in Ralph Breaks the Internet. Let's begin. So, is there a way to do something like that to slaughter race? Let's start with a quick punch. Did you notice that? In the area full of pop-ups, one of them invites Ralph to a website full of sassy housewives that want to meet him. That's pretty much standard advertisement for anyone who has surfed the web. But the amazing detail here is that the ad sports a picture of none other than Aunt Cass from Big Hero 6. This kind of suddenly made canon all the, how to put it, internet thirst around Aunt Cass's character. We're shocked. Isn't Shank a thing of beauty? This uncommon type for a Disney movie makes the character shine with their own light. Funny, irrelevant, beautiful, and super skilled, Shank represents a disruptive kind of women and possibly a new kind of role model for girls that, just like Vanellope, don't want to be princesses in the most traditional fashion. But did you know that the character is voiced by Wonder Woman herself? That's right, Gal Gadot not only voiced the character, but also served as a source of inspiration for her design, more specifically in her role as Giselle in the Fast and the Furious franchise. Ring a bell? Well, it should because Shank's awesome outfit and general demeanor are based on that character. No wonder she's a beast on the streets with a need for speed. She's a perfect role model and mentor for that little glitchy Vanellope. No, thankfully the e-boy here is not the male counterpart of an e-girl or this would have been a very different movie. We're talking about the super nice and cute messenger assistant from eBay that is sent from the web page every once in a while to remind Ralph of his commitment to the bid he made to buy that Sugar Rush spare steering wheel. In a very unexpected moment of sassiness, when he sees that Ralph is actually ready for checkout, he jokingly calls him Cassidy, which is a reference to the infamous Butch Cassidy, an American train and bank robber and leader of a gang of criminal outlaws known as the Wild Bunch in the Old West. This implies that the little e-boy thinks of Ralph as a criminal. Because because there's no way he could have reunited $27,001 in 24 hours. Ouch. When Ralph and Vanellope enter the Oh My Disney Zone, they go really nuts with the Easter eggs. Everywhere you look, there's something cool to notice, and as one could expect, they show off their most famous Marvel properties. From Iron Man himself making a flyby over the crowd full of blog visitors, to a brief cameo of legendary comic book creator Stan Lee, who is making one of his final cameo appearances, they really cover their Marvel ground. We get to see more stuff from the Earth's Mightiest Heroes as the Marvel Pavilion area is decorated with their most iconic weapons. We can spot Captain America's shield, a giant replica of Iron Man's gauntlet, and one from Thor. Baby Groot himself is answering fan questions on a stand and it's hilarious to hear him answer I am Groot to every question he's asked. And the funniest part is that people seem to understand him. They even got Vin Diesel to record his lines for the character. One final cool Avengers moment is seen when Vanellope is looking for a location to hide from the stormtroopers after coming for her. One of the doors she considers has the Avengers logo on it, but she ends up choosing the one labeled Princesses instead. Can you imagine how different that scene would have been if she met the Avengers instead? And if you thought that that was a lot of Marvel, wait till we tell you about the Star Wars related content. From that last scene, you already know that the stormtroopers work in Disney's security right? One of the many silver linings of the whole IP, if you ask us. But did you notice that C-3PO also works there? He went from serving Princess Leia to assisting all the Disney princesses as they work there, which makes us wonder, now that Disney owns Star Wars, isn't Leia a Disney princess too? And if we get 3PO, then we surely get R2. Little R2-D2 can be seen wandering around the expo in a quick cameo featuring his familiar beeps. The Stormtrooper 
Edwards and their latest episode design are not alone as they run behind Vanellope and try to catch her. We can see a hovering Millennium Falcon chilling while an X-Wing and TIE fighter battle over the crowd. Ma, that looks like so much fun. The world outside the internet also has its Star Wars share. He seems to be a huge fan of the franchise as we can spot Yoda and Chewbacca collector plates in the upper corner of a shelf in the arcade. Oh, and when Ralph goes viral before breaking the internet, we can see an office worker sporting a pretty sweet R2-D2 design on his tie. Did you know that he returned in 2018's Solo A Star Wars Story, right? Well, if you didn't, now you do. We don't get to see him, actually, but instead, during the Buzz Lightyear and Baymax appearance, there's a small avatar, a person from the real world sporting the horned black and red Darth Maul face design. Good thing Vanellope and Ralph didn't cross paths with the real guy. That would have been terrifying. The princess chamber is full of details and easter eggs. The animators really did their homework on this fantastic sequence. Right as Vanellope enters the chamber, all the princesses jump into defensive stances and use objects from their respective worlds as weapons to threaten the little glitch. Jasmine wields the magic lamp. Rapunzel has her iconic frying pan ready to blow. Mulan uses her sword as Belle arms herself with the power of knowledge, raising a book in the air a la John Wick. Of course, she uses her bow and arrows, Pocahontas a wooden staff, and Ariel is the cutest one as she threatens the intruder holding her dingle hopper. Looking around the room's decorations, we also spot them on one of the tables, and Jasmine even uses rug to put furniture on it. How disrespectful for a flying rug. There's two dolls from the beginning of Frozen, the Genie lamp is from Aladdin. There's also a magazine on the floor that says Paradise that depicts Moana's island. We've got a little hide and seek going on with Pascal, Rapunzel's chameleon, who is seen hanging out in the room as well. A very bizarre Easter egg can be found in the Blink and You Miss It moment, in which the movie uses a transition akin to the one made popular in the 60s Batman TV series. How crazy is that, knowing that Batman belongs to DC Comics and Warner Bros., the quintessential essential competitors to Marvel and Disney. Comic book lovers can transcend that kind of feud to create beautiful and unexpected moments like this one. It even uses the original sound effect from the series. It's beautiful. <laughs> We're reaching the end of the video, so it's more than appropriate to see what this movie did in its credits. As if they hadn't included enough easter eggs throughout its runtime, the designers worked extra to include some clever things in there as well. So we recommend you watch till the very end, and that's not because they advertised a supposed preview for Frozen 2. They ended up rickrolling us hard with that joke didn't they? Or is it Ralph rolling? Anyways, the animators decorated the screen with numerous icons parroting existing apps. It's safe to say that the School of Wizardry, a parody of Hogwarts mystery. They also included something called War During Various Ages to mock Clash of Clans and other mobile strategy games. There's also several apps modeled after Disney princess silhouettes, and one icon in particular kind of looks like the problem troll face meets Mickey mouse. And if you care about the games, the Pancake Milkshake app also makes a hilarious appearance as a post credit scene that'll make you cry with laughter. That movie had no chill when it comes to easter eggs, cameos, and references. Even to the last second of the trailer, they throw in everything their creativity allowed, and we couldn't be happier about it. It's fantastic seeing how Disney is still able to bring us original characters with compelling stories and amazing world building. Anyways, that's all for today's video. Check the rest of our channel for more content about Ralph, Vanellope, and all your favorite animated characters and movies. Of course, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and turn your notifications on by hitting that little bell if you want to keep receiving awesome stuff like this. Bye. Doo -doo -doo -boop -wop. Well, there's a lot to unpack here. Mm.